For this review, I have a crazy watch for you. It's a Richard Mill RM2703 Nadal. So this watch when originally was released was 2017 and initially it was kind of like a shocker for me when I saw that whole yellow and red. I don't know, immediately I dubbed it the Ronald McDonald's. That's just the way I always felt about it. Then when you saw it with a red strap or a yellow strap, it even went more McDonald's on me. I don't know, it just initially the color combination was a bit shocking. This is when Richard Mill was also starting to really experiment with colors on the NTPT, with the combination of colors. So when I saw the yellow and red initially, I said, I don't know if I like that. Then I kind of understand with the whole theme of the flag of Spain with the colors. I mean, I guess I kind of, I guess I kind of get it being that Rafael Nadal is obviously a Spaniard. Kind of starts going into a little bit of the whole theme of the watch. One thing I wanna say about all the Nadal watches they have released is that they all push the envelope. Let me tell you that people wonder why a Richard Mill is so expensive. They think that it's all hype. They think it's all branding. Yes, it's all branding, but it's also a lot of technology that goes behind these things. Well, what types of technologies are there? Well, I remember the first Richard Mill RM27 weighed so little that it was like absolutely absurd. It was like 20 something grams. It didn't even weigh anything. And little by little, they made it more and more advanced. By this one, we're at the O3 version Turbion, which kind of just had this abstract look from the first day I saw it. One of the first things you realize when you look at the dial of this watch is this whole V shape that it has right down the middle of the dial. Richard Mill claims that that is supposed to resemble the head of a bull. I guess, I mean, I don't know where they really see that. Actually, the whole time I always thought to myself, what is the deal with that V shape down the middle? I thought it was just something nice, just style, you know, the way that somebody designed it. When they kind of put that whole turn behind it and it's supposed to look like resemble the head of the bull, I don't know, I think that was kind of a reach in my opinion, but However, one of the craziest things that the RM2703 has is that it's able to withstand a ridiculous 10,000 Gs. 10,000 Gs, just to put it in perspective, the highest recorded on the Guinness Book of World Records of a man withstanding Gs was 214 Gs. All right, it was a car accident on a racetrack. So to have 10,000 Gs, I mean, really, what exactly is this thing made for? Interstellar travel or what the heck is going on here? And then people wonder why Richard Mill is so expensive. Would you imagine the type of research and development that has to go into these watches to be able to get a watch that can withstand that amount of G-forces and still be able to keep time? I mean, it's crazy. And to think that a double balanced skeleton needs service almost every three to five years, I mean, it just sets it that much apart. I mean, I don't even wanna know what the service is on this type of watch, you know? It's probably astronomical, 50G service, <laughs> something like that. So the thing about this watch is that it's actually so ridiculously sporty, okay? That it's just, it's not for everybody. This is the type of watch that I'll walk down the street and 99% of the people will think I have a toy made out of Play-Doh. They wouldn't understand what NTPT is. They wouldn't understand none of that. It just looks like a toy. And I guess this is what I always call an ultra sporty watch. It's like you've gotten so far into the sporty end of things that it doesn't even look like jewelry anymore. It just looks more like, I don't know, some type of a sports accessory to the next level. That's what this watch represents to me. I mean, with these colors, at first I didn't like it. Not gonna lie. I saw it for years on pictures of social media. Ed Sheeran was wearing one one time. And at first I kind of thought, what the heck is that? I remember the first Richard Mill with these crazy colors that shocked me was that booger green Johan Blake Turbion. That one was like, what the heck are we looking at here? But the Ronald McDonald has grown on me. And I wanna say that I do like it on the black underwear strap because that's what I call it. I mean, it has an elastic that's pretty much like an underwear. 
to go ahead and just make it that much more sporty. It's safe to say that if you own a watch like this, it's definitely not your first Richard Mille or your first Rodeo because this thing just completely stands out and is in your face. Like something like this is just so shout out, I can't even express it. I can't even stop looking at it and I'm wearing it on my wrist while I'm doing a video. That's how ridiculous this watch is, but ridiculous in a good way. Pretty much, this is one of the ultimate fuck you watches. It's true. If you have something like this on your wrist, I mean, what does it say? It says, I have a watch that looks like it came out of a Happy Meal and the retail is $725,000 or something like that. Pretty much almost 800. Just round it off when you get to that point. Taxes, all that. That's what it says. It's a watch that says, I don't care about what you think of how it looks. I know what I have. And that's the thing about Richard Mill. It happens all the time. I get people calling me saying, Hey Eric, do you think it's gonna be the next Frank Bueller? That's the thing about Richard Mill. Whereas the most complicated watch in the world has 57 complications, how many more complications can we cram in one watch? How many more different combination of complications can we come out with? Richard Mill decided that they were gonna do something completely different in watchmaking, something groundbreaking, something that nobody's done. So you come out with another watch that says, 57 complications. Everybody goes, oh my God, amazing. The next guy comes out with 58. You come out with the thinnest watch in the world like PIJ did. And what happens is, Bulgari comes out with an ultra thinner one. That's the way it goes. But with Richard Mill, I think it's gonna be pretty hard for another brand to come out with a watch that does 10,000 Gs. And that is what I'm trying to say. This is why I believe that Richard Mill will never be a Frank Mueller. Yes, the world economy could change. Yes, the interest of watches could change and all that. But it's not going to go down like Frank Mueller did, where they were making at the end of the day some pretty cheap watches at that moment that really didn't stand up to the real reputation of how they started. You see, the thing is, when a watch is this expensive and this rare, you can only expect the value to go up from there. And this is why probably there'll never be another Richard Mill ever. There might be another watch that's as hyped as Richard Mill at the moment, but I don't think there's ever gonna be another brand, at least for quite some time, that's gonna be like Richard Mill. Because Richard Mill went their own lane and carved their own new avenue. Look at this thing. I'm wearing a million dollar plus Ronald McDonald themed watch. For somebody that doesn't know, that's what they think. It looks like I bought it at the checkout line at Target. But if you really look closely, you can appreciate the ingenuity in all these pieces. I think I personally would have done the crown, just an entire tennis ball, honestly. I know that they left the NTPT there on the side and it has the cutouts of a, of a tennis ball, but I would have just done the whole, the whole thing, the color of a tennis ball at this point. Like honestly, when I first saw this thing that color, I thought to myself, why the hell do they do it that color? Then when I realized that obviously those are the colors of the Spanish flag, then duh, of course it makes sense. So comment below if you think this is the ultimate Happy Meal toy from Richard Mill. And if you like this video, like and share it. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel.